So in today's video, I want to share five steps that every homeowner who's facing foreclosure should take immediately. So if you're a homeowner facing foreclosure, if you know a homeowner facing foreclosure, these five steps need to be taken immediately. If you're not a homeowner facing foreclosure, maybe you are a wholesaler, a real estate investor. I encourage you to use these five steps uh, when you're working with homeowners in those situations. For one, I am an investor, but I'm also a consultant. And so as an investor, I want to buy properties. I want to do deals. I want to make money. I want to grow, expand, be a blessing to my family, to my church and my community. That's a part of doing business. But also as a consultant, I want to maintain integrity with my fiduciary responsibility to make sure that not only do the investors and wholesalers have tools in their toolbox, but to make sure that homeowners, especially those who are in distress, have information so that they can make the best decision possible, even though they may be in a distress situation. Now, one of the common questions I get, my team gets a lot because we work primarily with homeowners who are in foreclosure through our home solutions division. One of the common questions we get on a regular basis once we <laughs> contact them is, what should I do? A lot of times when we are explaining to homeowners that they have a auction pending in a week or two here in Georgia, it's every first Tuesday of, of, of the month, some of them are shocked. They thought their mom took care of it. They thought their spouse handled it. They thought the bank reversed it or whatever the case is. But sometimes homeowners who are in these distressed situations can be so buried in life that they don't come up to breathe long enough to figure out what's exactly going on. So when I get that question in no uncertain terms, what should I do? I take them to these five steps because whether it's me uh, assisting them or whether it's the bank or an attorney or whoever it is assisting them, I want them to make the best educated and informed decision possible. Step one, seek help. Now, when I say seek help, I'm talking about seeking help from someone who actually knows how to handle this type of situation. Every investor doesn't deal with distressed situations. They may deal with distressed properties, but they don't always deal with d the distressed financial situations attached to those properties like defaults, foreclosures, liens, or whatever the things are that the homeowner is dealing with financially. So you want to seek help from someone who knows what's going on. Now, of course, you can call the bank, but if you're a homeowner, you're not an investor, you're not a professional wholesaler, then you don't always know what questions to ask the rep. You don't always know how to get to the right department. A lot of times, if the home is already in foreclosure and it's headed to auction, uh, a third party is overseeing that, that uh, situation and the bank has literally shut that communication line down and that representative may not have access to all the information. So you may need to reach out to uh, an investor or consulting company like myself and our company who can assist you in asking the right questions, uh, making sure that you get in contact with the right people. Uh, that's very, very important. So seek help from someone who knows exactly what's going on. In today's world, we have investors, we have wholesalers, we have uh, transaction coordinators, we have a lot of real estate uh, agents and professionals who are familiar with these nuances, who do a tremendous job and they provide a tremendous service, even though we do get a bad rap because we come off as scammers and as sharks when the truth is we're helping a lot of people prevent foreclosure. Step two, gather all the facts. When I say gather all the facts, what am I talking about? Well, we need to get the facts about the loan, the arrears. We need to get the facts about uh, who is the foreclosure trustee if we don't have that information. We need to get facts about uh, if there are other things that we don't know. A lot of times a homeowner 
may only know that they're behind, but not, they don't know how much they're behind. They may not know if it's a second lien. Uh, is this a foreclosure from the HOA and you just didn't know it? You, you'd be surprised, but it happens. So we want to gather all the facts. We need to be informed about what's going on. So when we're talking to people and asking questions, we know exactly what's going on. And I know sometimes it can take a hit on the dignity of the homeowner to share this information, but it's very important, especially if you have someone uh, investing their time to work with you. Step number three, determine what will be the best outcome. Not for the investor, not for the wholesaler, not for the real estate agent, not for the bank, but what will be the best outcome for the homeowner and their family? That doesn't mean you're going to get the best outcome because the circumstance may be too far gone, but at least if you are in my position as an investor or a consultant or a wholesaler or an agent or some type of professional, give them the, the, the flexibility uh, to at least process what the best outcome would be or what other options they may have. They may have a best outcome, a second best outcome, a third best outcome, but either way, there's gonna have to be an outcome. And if you can help them process that, it just makes it a little easier for them to get through which uh, outcome uh, they're gonna have to, uh, they're gonna have to work towards. Uh, step number four, find exactly where the resources are. So if the best outcome is for them to stay in their homes, where are the resources? Do they need money to pay arrears uh, to reinstate the loan to stay in the home? Uh, if the best outcome is for them to relocate, okay, do we have the resources for them to relocate? Uh, is it feasible for them if they have a family or if they have a, 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 a child who is uh, disabled? Like people have all types of things going on and we need to be available to help people with these all types of things going on. So we want to find exactly where the resources are. And step five, we want to maintain an open line of communication. This goes for both sides. As a homeowner, you got to stay communicating. You got to communicate with the bank. I'm telling you, I've talked to homeowners who tell me, no, I haven't talked to anyone at the bank. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, okay, so what are you going to do? Like we're a week or two away from an auction and you've done nothing. We have to do something and we have to walk through this process. So we want to maintain an open line of communication. If you are the homeowner in this situation, as hard as it is, you cannot put your head in the dirt and hope it changes past that auction date. I've seen homeowners do that. And when the auction date comes, their homes are sold to a third party or sold to a bank. And that day someone comes knocking at their door or within a few weeks they're evicted and now they don't know what they're going to do. They're forced to leave. We don't want that. It doesn't have to end like that, but you got to stay in communication, especially if you're working with wholesalers or investors. If you're the wholesaler and investor working with the homeowner, maintain that communication, especially as wholesalers, because a lot of times you're, 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 you're working in the middle, looking for an in buyer, trying to make everything work, opening escrow, getting the title search. And there's a lot that goes on, especially when it's a foreclosure and it's a distress situation, but you have to communicate with that homeowner to at least relieve them somewhat of their distress so that they know you're on top of it. You're going to make it work and it's okay. You shouldn't have to hide. I don't think wholesalers and investors have to tiptoe around and act like they are not doing what they're doing. No, if buying the house is the best outcome for you and for your family based on the information that we've gathered, then that's the best outcome. I've had families who have sold their homes to us and at closing literally cry at the closing table because they're so thankful and grateful that we stepped in to not only help them, but to give them money, to assist them in relocating, to uh, saving their credit, all the other things that people say about wholesaling and investing, especially in the distress pre foreclosure space are things that are being said by people who don't know what's really going on. So again, if you're the wholesaler or investor, 
use these five, communicate them, and be there for the homeowner. If you're the homeowner in distress, especially if you're here in uh, Metro Atlanta, uh, this is what we do every day. Our division is a home solutions division under our investment company, and there have been many, many, many cases, many more cases than most people think that we did not buy the home. We just helped the homeowner stay in the home and we made sure that they had the resources and the information and the support to get through that process, prevent the foreclosure, stay in their home. And then there have been times that we have had to take uh, ownership of the home, purchase it and help them get to the next chapter. So if that's you, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Either way, we want to be a resource. We want to make sure that those who are in this space know that they have legitimate people of integrity who are always willing to help them in whatever the situation 